and just proves that uh, you don't know uh, the ways of God. And, and, and uh, the, his, his, his thoughts are secret unless, you, unless it's revealed to you. So uh, following the will of God, I then opened up the packet of uh, the brochures for Quebec. And there was several of them, maybe eight, nine, or 10 different places to visit in Quebec. And um, I kind of did the same thing again. I, I fleeced before the Lord and I prayed. And then I came up with the Villa Bellevue, uh, which is uh, this very spot here is a place where they come up here. It's a five mile hike down to the main lodge to Villa Bellevue, which would be in this direction. And the visitors, the guests, they hike up there. They used to anyway. 1969 back there and so I came back in 1970 and I was staying at the foot of this hill here in a chalet a cottage and one day the Lord spoke to me and told me to come up here and he would meet me up here and I came up here and I walked up here I believe it was 1970 I came up here and I got here I seen the, this uh, um, fireplace here, I suppose you call it. And um, here, and then I noticed there was three tables. One was there, one was here, and the one was over here. And I sat there, I thought it was something very unusual. And so then I thought, uh, there's something strange about this. And the voice of God spoke to me and said, read Genesis 22, which I'll read to you. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, Lo, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. May God a blessing to the reading of his word. And um, with this here, Lord spoke to my heart and told me that, well, certain things he laid out in front of me and told me that uh, one day that the seed in me would possess the gates of my enemy. And uh, then he spoke to me and said that this represented the, the, the altar of Abraham. And those were the three tables from where the sacrifice, Christ, Isaac being the type, was fed at the table of Luther, the table of Wesley, the table of Pentecost. And this, the, 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 the sacrifice itself was the word. And this was the word. And this revelation came to me back then. That was 1969. Came back in 1970 and 71. And of course, you know, the, the real sacrifice came in 1974, the revelation of the seven thunders. But this was where it first happened right here. And then many, many blessings uh, I was blessed with here and many enjoyable moments I spent here in meditation and prayer and for the many complex problems that uh, a pastor has to contend with. Amen. And so, but um, then it was after 1971, many things the Lord showed me, but I couldn't even preach on them because it was way, way, way out of season. And so therefore, um, but 1980, feeling led to come up here again, uh, Brother Joey Balomo, we were speaking about coming up here in July, and then it only worked out for August uh, 17th weekend. He had the time off, and I had to get away. So we came up and we visited the Villa Bellevue over here, and we stayed here, and I came uh, coming up here at that time. And I came over here myself, and um, came right up to my spot here. And here the Lord uh, gave me back the same scripture again and told me that the time has come for the manifestation of it. Uh, thy seed possessing the gates of his enemy. And I sat right over on this spot here. Just to pray right here on that spot right there. And sitting there, I believe it was August uh, 20th, I believe it was. Sitting there, sitting there, 
and we're going to visit Mount Tremblon, which is about five kilometers away, which we will visit after we leave here. And uh, coming over here from there, I was sitting here, and over there in 1980, I wanted to climb the mountain to where I had seen those two capstones, which we'll talk about that later. And so coming back here in 1980, August, uh, it has a sign over there, no trespass. And we checked and we found out that they were dynamiting the stones off the ski trails. And it, it was absolutely forbidden to climb up or even go up because of danger of the dynamite. So I felt a big letdown because I so had wanted to visit that spot that I had gone to in 1970 and 71, and especially 1971 where I had found the scar that Sister Coleman lost. And the Lord told me it would be a sign of restoration to me. And I'd find the scar and it would be a sign of restoration. So therefore, I came back here and I was sitting there wondering, why couldn't I go up the mountain? Isn't it time after uh, preaching at Shiloh in Fort Wayne in July 1980, I thought perhaps it was time for the sea to be to begin to possess the, the gates of the enemy. And I thought the hour was here. And I came here, and dynamite went off three times. It just bang, bang, bang went off. And the Lord spoke to me and said um, that uh, the the dynamite the dynamite going off the natural dynamite going off would be a sign to you that. There's dynamite on the mountain, natural dynamite, and there's dynamite and rocks and stones out of the mountain. And that he told me that though there, you cannot go to the top at this time, the top of Mount Tremblant, he says uh, you cannot go to the top, but as you hear the dynamite going off, uh, it'll be a sign to you, even though August 1980 is not the time for the adoption yet, but the, the, the dynamite is a sign to you that there will be power on the mountain. And immediately he spoke to me and told me power would be to come into the church. And, but a new phase of the ministry would begin, which would be go back to New York and begin to uh, dynamite the rocks and the stones that offend on his holy mountain. So I came back and I uh, preached on a Wednesday, uh, the separation of the seed from the shuck. And that's how it began in August 1980 in New York City. And then shortly after that, the cloud was turned and there was uh, the power, the dynamite on the mountain, but it was not time for the, the manifestation of the adoption as yet. So the cloud was turned in New York, the cloud was turned in uh, Maryland, and the cloud was turned in Coronationville in South Africa. And we came back in uh, January 1981, which you know the rest of it is spiritual history to you, because April, Brother Junior LeBron, in Puerto Rico came up to church, and that really began uh, um, charity never failed. And but actually, the Lord spoke it right there is where He revealed it to me in August 1980, and just turned the cloud, the power poured out three times and four times really in France also in October 1980. But then it began to m manifest itself in April 1981 and right on through up to now. So um, it was very strange how in coming here in the beginning, after I got here, uh, we didn't know anything about the place, my wife and I, and our children were small then. And uh, I picked up a French newspaper I found and uh, it was Le Summit, the summit. And it had Mount Tremblant, and it had it on the peaks. And it had uh, um, in the summit, the voice, the, the echoing voice. It was in French, but I got somebody to read it for me. And then we a inquired about uh, the history of the mountain. And they said that the Indians said, Indian lore, that um, on the mountain, the Indians many, many times heard God speaking on the mountain, and the mountain would, would tremble. And they call it Mount Tremblant, which means the tremble, trembling. So that's where, after I found out and understood what it meant, I, the Lord spoke to the, there to me uh, a few times. So we just uh, want to thank the Lord 
for being here. And Brother Joe, you can scan the brothers here. I'll let them see who's up here with us. And so we're going to pick it up. Just kind of go around here. here. Okay. More Brother Nino. Just kind of go around. Amen. One by one, just pass by there. So Brother Joe, if you see, they can see you. All the brothers. Now give a nice smile because you're on the video. <laughs> Amen. So we certainly uh, deem it a blessing to be up here, and it's just relaxing and uh, stillness. You feel like you, you, we understand why the prophet uh, liked to come to the mountains. I mean, I not trying to be like the prophet now. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. But really it is, and we're having a really uh, a nice time up here, a lovely time, and we're enjoying ourselves, and we're relaxing and, and fellowship in here. And I, the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to bring the ministry up here and their families. And I felt that uh, it's for purpose. And so we don't know what the purpose is yet, but uh, we know that before we leave, uh, it will be revealed. So may the Lord bless you from my little uh, sanctuary here, my little spot here. I call it, I don't know what to call it, but this is where the Lord has blessed me many, many times. So the Lord bless you, and I'll see you on Mount Tremblo. Amen. God bless you. Well, we uh, certainly want to uh, greet you again in the name of the Lord and testifying this morning to the local Christian assembly. Uh, we want to continue our testimony and we're here on what I call Mount Tremblant. And uh, before we um, start testifying about the uh, blessings that uh, I received up on this mountain, i like to recap uh, and go back to the, the other mountain this morning that I spoke about. That I should say that place over there, on top of the mountain there. And I, I couldn't think of the name of it, but then I came back. And the name of it, what I called it was Mount Moriah. And uh, speaking about that, I forgot to mention to you that when I first got there, uh, the altar, I called it the altar, and when I walked up, there was materials there. And the materials was wood, and there was a knife, and there was a, a aluminum foil was there, and a grate, and a grate. And uh, the Holy Spirit just kind of spoke to my heart, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide for himself a sacrifice. And uh, speaking about Isaac, who was the sacrifice that was supposed to be, but Jehovah, he provided a ram in his, in his, uh, absent, in his place. And we know Isaac is the type of Jesus Christ. And I have some of my original notes here that I wrote down August 18, 1970. And I call it Mount Moriah Meditation. So I'll share, I'll share these notes with you. I've never really been able to preach on these notes because uh, it was way, way, way out of season. But now I feel that the hour has come to begin to speak on the things that, I, that the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart way back in 1970. And so I'll just share the notes with you. Um, as I have it down here, here's my notepad, you can see it. Uh, covenant confirmed, Genesis 22, 16 and 17, obeyed God's voice. And I have a, a, a drawing of Mount Moriah and I showed the, the three tables and the, and the altar and a few notes there and so forth. And here um, I had the Luther, three tables. I had here Mount Moriah, personal experience. Three tables, Luther, Wesley, and Pentecostals. Altar of sacrifice. And I had the rock. The whole area is upon a rock. The altar, the wood, the knife was all here, including three tables. The sacrifice, the wood is unto, is unto obedience, which was a type, the wood that was there. This is, this is what I wrote down. This is a symbol, altar. God will provide the word to be consumed upon the altar. The bride, in obedience, will do God's will to the last jot or tittle. The altar is the bride's portion, and my scriptures was, Romans 12, 1 and 2, present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
In Hebrews 13, 15, and 16, the sacrifice of praise to God. And I had a spiritual experience, it's four crises. And uh, the number four experience, surrender our very life to God that he may consume it by his fire. Our God is a consuming fire. And if God, the Holy Ghost, took possession of these bodies, then his life was going to consume all that, that there was of ours. In other words, if the fire comes in you for the Holy Ghost baptism, it burns your life out. And the only thing left would be God's life, because yours would be consumed by the fire. And then the seed would burn by the Holy Ghost, which would be the wood or the ram on the fire. And Abraham surrendered all that he had, Isaac, the seed, his, his very own self-possession. Isaac, a type of Christ, sacrifice was provided by Jehovah. And today, uh, we have to surrender all that we have, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and God provides a sacrifice that will burn in his place. And that is faith and uh, virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and God's and brotherly kindness, the seven thunders, the seven virtues. God himself provides that. And then uh, we put that on the altar, and that will burn, and that will be consumed by fire. <clears throat> and the lamb, the sacrifice was provided by Jehovah. The lamb, the word Christ, was provided in, in its self place. Therefore, God, uh, because we are elected before the foundation of the world, and uh, the blood has uh, covered our sins, and there's no unbelief, there's no sin, and all only thing that God wants to see in front of us, we're dead, we're hidden away, and he lets the seven virtues burn in our place. In Genesis 22, 13, and 14, you will only see Jehovah Jireh in the mount of the Lord. And Abraham took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his own self, and, which would be ourselves. This journey of righteousness, just a few notes, daily. Jehovah Jireh uh, provides a ram, the word made manifest for this day. We die, take the ram in our place. The Holy Ghost fire consumes the ram in our stead. The flesh is burnt, God's Holy Spirit fire is seen consuming our life and this is what I call practicing practicing his presence and I mentioned not too long ago here in a message the breaking of the seventh seal uh, uh, hear the word and recognize the word and uh, and act upon the word and now in this season now to go further uh, practicing his presence because his presence is here with us now Joseph perfection is his presence and we must practice his presence by living the seven virtues in our lives so if we have come to practicing his presence we've come to the mountaintop experience and practicing his his presence would be abiding would be adoption be Christ practicing his presence Christ practicing his presence is allowing Christ to move into the area of our human personality, which would be our self-spirit, which would be reason, imagination, affection, conscience, memory. It would be allowing Christ. This is the test of practicing the presence of Jesus Christ. We have heard the word through Malachi 4. We recognize his presence, the dynamics, the word, where he's at in his word, and we're trying to act upon it. And in acting upon it, we'll make ourselves ready. And then and if we want to act upon it, then we must practice his presence. His presence is Joseph's perfection. And we must let this live out in our lives. And many, many Christians rest as babes. Number one, they have knowledge that their sins are forgiven. Number two, they have a home in heaven they save. And many of them cannot go any further than this. And this is a war that goes on with the people and this is if the, the pastor trying to preach Joseph perfection and Ephesians, and yet you have little baby Christians who only want to have knowledge that they're saved and in the message, and they have a home in heaven. But that was fine. But up to this time now, uh, this will not suffice. We have to become perfect according to Ephesians 4:13. So therefore, uh, they have a home in heaven. They say these babes, 
uh, they choose to run their lives their own way. The pastor cannot tell them. Nobody can tell them. The deacon, nobody can say anything to them at all. They have their own mind about it. They, they say, well, I got my tapes. They hear the tapes and the books and so forth. They don't need any man to tell them. And they want to run their own life their own way. Their emotions, their mind, and wills are entirely at their own disposal. They don't want to open to, to anybody else. What they want or what they say is the experience of their daily life. In other words, what they want to do when they get up in the morning, go to work or whatever, with their family, their wife or whatever, not to worry now, but what they want to do. And this has been the problem in the church. They don't want to take the word for their daily lives as they live. <clears throat> So therefore, they have no experience in the Word. They're, they're afraid of tests and trials and situations where God will place them in. They're afraid to go into those situations because they don't have faith. And so therefore, you can understand it takes a revelation of uh, before you receive the Holy Ghost, you have a you need a revelation of Joseph's perfection. And then with the revelation of Joseph's perfection, that that's your seed, your time, and your Word. Therefore, with that revelation, God seals you. Then you are ready to actually let God's word be your uh, daily experience and not your own what you think and what you feel. So, mind you now, these are notes from 1970. It's not just today, 1970, but the church wasn't ready to even receive this. And I have here, recognizing the presence of God is realizing that the Lord Jesus dwells in us as the inner man, the new man. Ephesians 3.16 Colossians 3.10, Ephesians 4.24. Practicing his presence, uh, adoption, abiding, placing. Practicing his presence is allowing Christ to move into the area of my human personality. When we open our will, our spirit, our personality to Christ, Jesus moves out of the inside man, the soul. In other words, he's bound in the soul. And if I uh, reasoning powers or uh, imagination, we allow it to work, then Christ in your heart is a prisoner. He's not free to move into your imagination, your memory, your affection, your conscience, your human personality. And this has been up to this time. But now Joseph's perfection, Christ the seed for this age, must move from the soul into the spirit, which is your human personality which affects your whole entire life, your whole being, your, your all in all. Amen. <clears throat> and Jesus moves out of the inside man, the soul, into the area of our, of our middle circle or cycle, our personality, which you understand. This means that he moves into the area of my emotion, my mind, myself, my reason, imagination, memory, affection, conscience. The bride allow the word to come down through their mind into their hearts. That's the seed, the inner man. And it might grow in righteousness and true holiness. Be renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And you're adding virtue and patience and temperance and so forth, the, the virtues. Ephesians 3.17, that the word Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith dwell. May Christ through your faith actually dwell. Settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. That's what it means to dwell. It's not a temporary visit. You go to the doctor, uh, uh, something wrong with you, and uh, he comes to visit you, and uh, you're sick in the bed, and the doctor comes, and it's only a temporary visit. Not so with Christ. When he comes in by the Holy Ghost, he is a permanent residence in your heart. <clears throat> so therefore, we practice his presence when we invite him to settle down, to abide, to make his permanent home in our hearts and in our human spirits. Uh, this he will do in every area of our personality. It will be Christ dwelling in the middle cycle or circle of ourselves. Our emotions, mind, spirit, Virtue, knowledge, righteousness, godliness will be anointed to live in our middle circle instead of our own reasoning, and imagination, and memory and affection. In other words, right now, uh, what we think lives. It's anointed by our own human spirit. But the seed in you, the seven virtues, the thunders, the 
hour has come now for Christ, the anointing, to anoint that. And that will move out of prison and break out into your middle cycle and live. And then it'll be the word made flesh coming from the soul to the mind and out to people to see it. And, it, and, and as the Greeks would say, we would see Jesus, they will see Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um, it will be the Holy Ghost moving out from our hearts to live in our living room. Our hearts is the bedroom, you understand that? And the, uh, the middle cycle is the living room and the flesh that you eat in is the kitchen. So therefore, come out of the bedroom and into the living room where we entertain daily. And there we entertain one another and we have fellowship in the living room and so forth. And sometimes uh, up to now there's been a lot of fighting and squabbling and so forth in the living room. But when the virtues come out of, your, out of the bedroom and begin to live in the living room, which is the middle, and then there'll be fellowship and joy and love divine in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and we entertain daily on the subway, on your jobs, with your families, with your friends, in the church. That's the living room where you have fellowship at. Remember that when Christ comes in the, in the power, when Christ comes in, the power comes in. He comes in to control. This is what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And many people think that they'll go into a wild orbit of hallelujah, praise God, glory to God, I know I got it. That's not being filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> filled with the Spirit, the Spirit in me. This is not me having more of the Spirit. You can't grab more of the Spirit because you can't contain it, you see? A great something outside, a latter rain baptism or something or other. No, but, the, but uh, to be filled with the Spirit is for the Spirit <clears throat> To, uh, being filled with the Spirit is being controlled by the Spirit. And the Spirit is the Word. And the Word is the seven thunders. And when you let the seven thunders, the seven virtues control you, then you are filled with Joseph's perfection. Amen. Then you're filled with the Spirit. Amen. Then the anointing strikes and then you see Christ living. Because it's the Word going out and the anointing is striking it. So we, uh, we have to be anointed and then fill of the Holy Ghost for service. So being filled with the Spirit is being controlled by the Spirit. <clears throat> so being filled with the Spirit will not result in my going into a wild, ecstatic orbit. It, but it be to be led by the Spirit, which is the Word. And as I am filled, so I will be controlled. And my new Christian experience will be the demonstration of the life of Jesus Christ through my reasoning, memory, affection, and conscious reason, and so forth. It will be through my middle cycle. So there are just a few notes I, I wanted to share with you, uh, 1969, 1970, and the Lord uh, brought me up here. And these things here, I tried to preach it, but uh, to no avail. It was way out of season. <clears throat> and so now, um, thank you, Brother Andrew. You're on video now. <laughs> so now, so much, I just wanted to recap uh, my little experience on Mount Moriah, and now I wanted to come here to what I call, what, what is called Mount Tremblon. And um, I came here in 1969, the same time as I went over there, and the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to me and told me to climb this mountain. And um, I believe I came here 1969, I think I have the date here, July 11, 1969, and I came back up here again, August 17, 1970, and August 21st, 1970. Excuse me, and I came back again August 20, um, 1971, July or August, I'm not sure. And I came back again August 1980, and uh, also July 1981, and of course now August 1983. So I came up here, and I believe I have some notes here. It says Mount Tremblant, August 17, 1970. I arrived here at 9.30 a.m. I was meditating up here, and I was reading on the book of Genesis, and there I was reading Lamech, and reading the, the lineage of uh, Abraham's sons, coming to, not Abraham, rather, but uh, um, Adam, coming to, the lineage of Adam, rather, coming down through, and all the way down to Noah. And I was reading and meditating about Lamech, because there was two Lamechs. 
one, one was on Cain's side and one was on uh, uh, the Adam side. So you can see the impersonation there. And then uh, the one on Adam's side, Lamech, uh, was number nine. And when uh, he was the ninth son, and just before Noah and the flood come, uh, he prophesied that Noah would, would bring the relief to the earth. So it's a little uh, there. You see the number nine appear in Genesis. Now notice that Lamech lived to be seven, uh, 177 years old. So there I seen three sevens. I was just meditating upon this. And then the Lord spoke to my heart what the three sevens meant to me. And one seven was the seventh seal. The second seven was the seven thunders. And the third seven was the seven vials. And the Lord spoke this to my heart, and I didn't know what it meant. And then um, give me a scripture, St. John 7, 14 through 17, that you will know the doctrine It'll make you free. And then at 10.45 a.m., I was just meditating. And so there, you can't see it here, but down in there, you can uh, train the camera down in there, Brother Joe. Right now, that's what this is down in there. Because I remember being over there, and then coming back up here, you see this rock here. So it's right over in that spot over there. So I was meditating somewhere around in here, and I walked down in there, and um, now here I have 10.45 a.m. Now the Lord gave me two signs up here, and I walked down in there at 10.45 a.m., and I walked down into a cloth, and there sitting on a rock was a stone in the shape of a pyramid, and uh, I have the pictures of this stone home. I found those pictures, and I showed it to the different brethren. And there was uh, three peaks on it. And uh, I don't know whether you can get a picture of this here, Brother Joe. OK, got it. And I had three peaks there. I know that I took a, I drew the picture of it like this, long ways. And then uh, on the angle, the three peaks, the front. And I took a backside. And here I have three peaks. Capstone reveal, seventh seal, seven thunders, seven vials. And I hooked it back into Lamech, 777, prophesying just before Noah, and of course this time, just before the tribulation period. And that's all I knew. I didn't know anything about the thunders at all. That's all I knew. That's what he told me, that that's what the capstone meant there. And so then I, later on I came up here, and I've seen this here. If you can get a picture of, uh, one there, that that layer there, right down there. And then under there, Luther, Wesley, the Pentecostals here, and this is the capstone here. And here's the pyramid the Lord showed me. And so I didn't know what it all meant, but he told me this was the pyramid, and that was the capstone. And this is the second time that this has happened happened down St. Martin, I, uh, I showed me a pyramid without a cap. And he showed me something like this. I had a, it was one, two, three. Then it was a, 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 like a round cement with a flag on the top. It represented Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and the word and the pyramid. So this is the second time it happened to me. So therefore, um, this meant to me um, that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that this was the capstone here and the Lord spoke to my heart that that was the uh, seven thunders and so forth. And of course, the rest of his history when he revealed it. So I never came back here again. That was 1971. And when we leave here, we'll go over here and I'll show you a spot where I found my wife's scarf. And we had been, um, I brought her up, I think it was on a Friday maybe. And I was getting ready to leave the following week. It was a Friday, and I, she, so we, we got halfway down the hill, down the mountain, and she looked for a scarf, and the scarf was gone. So I started to go back up. I looked around, I said it would be impossible to find the scarf who's up here. I showed her all, uh, these signs right here. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you will find the scarf Monday, and when you find it, it'll be a sign to you of the restoration. It'll be on. So I'll show you the spot when we walk out over here where I prayed. 
And of course, uh, uh, we f uh, we found this uh, the scarf, and I'll demonstrate it to you over here. We have found the scarf, and the, it was a sign. And in October, Brother Harry Wimple, and Brother ba uh, Bill Miller, came to the assembly, and it was a sign of the restoration on. And of course, in Dece uh, January 1972. Brother Carl Thompson and the rest of the brethren began to come into the assembly and New Jersey come in to really put life into the church and begin our restoration. So anyway, um, just quickly now and briefly, um, 1980, I came back up here again. And um, like I told you before, I believe I spoke already this morning, uh, what that meant to me and so forth, uh, power on the mountain. and then, what was significant was that Brother Baloma and myself could not come up here. And then my whole thing was to come up here to this. I felt the Lord it was significant and had something to do with 1980. So we couldn't come up at all. And then I already testified what it meant, power on the mountain and so forth. And there the Lord up here over the other, on Mount Moriah revealed to me the, the uh, um, virtue power for service and uh, so therefore I, I know what it means it means that uh, somebody the pastors have, have got to uh, taste and experience each revelation for their people and when they can taste it and experience it then they are, are able to preach it back to the people otherwise there will be no anointing there will be nothing because they have not experienced it and if, it's, if the man has not experienced it, he would only be preaching knowledge and quotes and so forth. There will be no true conviction and no faith from his heart because he doesn't know what it is. But a man that has a revelation and has experienced what I'm talking about here, he can stand before his people and preach it right back to them and pour what he has in himself into them, which Amen. is the word of God, which is scripture. For while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell. And you've seen that there when uh, we gave the... The testimonies, uh, how Brother Tommy spoke on the Holy Ghost and fire went into Brother Jim Lawson, and Brother Junior here, when he spoke on Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5, and fire went out and baptized Joanne with the Holy Ghost. So we see that while Peter yet spake these words, that's what it all means. And so therefore, we come back to this time. So in 1980, the Holy Spirit says, it's not time to come back here. To this spot he said when you come to this spot it'll be at the end it'll be finished that's what he told me i have it written down so uh he said come back again next year so we came back in 1981 and I brought the deacons up here i thought well maybe could this be the finish i wasn't sure and we came up here and we had a tremendous time and experience up here the deacons and for you all have have heard the testimonies but I knew that the time was not yet. And so, therefore, I said, well, Lord, I know the time is coming soon. Then when Joseph's perfection was revealed in Fort Wayne, and I've seen how the Holy Spirit, he said, take the ministers up. And uh, we have three witnesses here up on this mountain here, Brother Nino, Brother Joey, Brother Junior. We have, we have our sons here and our friends here. And so now, just as a testimony, my own personal conviction, my own personal feeling. We noticed that we started to walk up this mountain again. At the foot of the mountain, the mountain is sealed off again. It doesn't have a sign of no, of no trespassing, but it's just sealed off, which, we, which we'll take a picture at the end. Amen. So it means something to me. Amen. The mountain is sealed. I mean, I want to know. I, ha I want to ask you a question. Is that hour, has an hour arrived? I mean, is the... Uh, the adoption season here, and when Christ has come forth, the the anointing is here, the door is shut, has that hour arrived? Then it would have to be that if the hour has arrived, then that would mean that there's no more climbing up to the mountain. The season is here. The word is in you. The message is in your hearts and is now ready to be loose by Christ to move out into your living room and manifest Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you're already on the mountain. You're already here. And so we'll be talking about that later on. So these things that I have shared with you today, 
We up here now, and Brother Baloma has taken a picture of the camp. I feel like this is the capstone. I know what it means to, to cap the pyramid. When we came back last year, 1981, I could not find that three-cornered rock. And the Lord spoke to me and says, you don't have to find it because the revelation has gone out. And what we did find was many pieces of three-cornered stones up here where it was a sign to me that that three-cornered stone unsealed was, uh, was sealed rather, was unsealed, and the revelation went out because across the earth. The revelation of uh, the thunders and the seventh seal and the vials and so forth. So now we come here to the capstone himself, Jesus Christ, Amen. ready to cap our pyramids, which is our bodies. And I feel that this is the season we're in now, and the uh, capstone himself, Joseph Perfection, Jesus Christ Amen. is now ready in this next season here to move into the local Christian assembly and understand the new ministry here. We uh, felt led to bring up the same services that you uh, have been viewing in New York City uh, in our absence, which would be August the 14th and August the uh, 17th, I believe, tomorrow. and. Uh, Sunday hence uh, August the 21st well we have these same three services here the videotapes here and we uh, were rejoicing last night as we seen uh, um, the inkhorn rider and there clearly you could see uh, it was a prophecy Amen. and it was uh, it was a prophecy to the church in New York City where the people are, are bound yet in the church here as they are in the message it's been my desire to bring the word to the people, the husbands, the wives, the children, the older people in the message here in New York City that they might be free and come out of spiritual prisons. And it's been a long time in New York City. Many husbands, they mean well, but they have their wives in a legalistic prison. And this has been in my heart. And I've seen the video how the Holy Spirit poured that out on May 15th. So therefore, it was a prophecy, and all five messages were prophecies. And then on, of course, June 8th, Brother Junior was sealed after Joseph's perfection. So there, I told you that it wasn't time yet that we have to come here, and then you have to catch up and understand what is your message and what is going on. And the inkhorn rider and the seal of God and the new birth and the going after the lost and all these things you must understand and then the season is here. So therefore, uh, when Brother Junior, when God dropped down and revealed Revelation 5 uh, supernaturally, and therefore that would be August the 7th. And August the 5th, the Holy Spirit told me, uh, not even knowing uh, what was uh, on these tapes and so forth, really, but he told me on August the 5th that uh, uh, August the 7th, that Acts 5 ministry would start. So therefore, I can only give you a testament of what the Lord told me, just like he told me this and all the rest of these things here. And that's what he told me. By faith, not knowing how, I stepped out for two and a half hours and preached Sunday morning. And for two and a half hours, to try to free the church because it would be impossible for anybody in this church unless they were sealed. And I rejoice that Brother Nino and Brother Joey here and Brother Junior and other brothers in the church, how they, they appreciate their wives and, and, and they love them. And they're not offended by the things that I preach. For they want to know, am I doing something wrong? I want to make the rapture. So therefore, uh, if your heart condemns you not, you shouldn't be offended. But if you're doing something wrong, well, then it should be brought out. Because the Bible says that anything that's hidden shall come to light. So therefore, we rejoice in the word of God and the fact that that word is here now. So understand New York City. When we come back, uh, the season is here now. And the mercy of God is going forth to us here last Sunday, this Wednesday, and Sunday coming up. And I feel after August 28th when we come back that it's, uh, that season is here where Christ will come, the seed in here burst out, and go into your living rooms Amen. and begin to manifest itself. So therefore, then that would mean that we have to practice the presence of Jesus Christ. That would mean that I would Amen. have to preach the Bible. 
That would mean that Amen. Brother Nino and Brother Joey and Brother Junior would have to preach the Praise Bible. God. And no man with his Amen. thoughts or whatever he's doing, God. his sins cannot bind God. Amen. 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 So therefore, uh, brothers, if you're not right, you better get Praise right. God. Because uh, the Acts 5 mercy means that the, uh, that the Holy Spirit, that that person will call you right out by Amen. your name. So therefore, this is mercy bringing the word to you. God Praise is. God, word Amen. by word by word. And these young men are up here, and I trust and pray for them that they themselves will go out of here changed. Amen. And that they will be testimonies to the young men in the church that the hour has come for the young men also to be sealed. Amen. The hour has come for them to begin to pray. My own son is here. I want to see him sealed and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. So, be uh, beloveds, in closing here, and I never did this before, I never felt led to, because I just didn't feel that the people would believe it. And only a few cl close friends would even accept it. But it seemed like I doubt if we will come back here again. And I just feel that this is the finish. So therefore, this being the finish, uh, I like to just show these uh, little uh, revelations and blessings and share with you, New York City, these things that God has so graciously, I say, blessed us with. Because what he gives to me is for you, not just for me. And so therefore, it's for you. Because if he's gonna, if there's something about New York City, well then he's got to uh, make that something come to pass, Amen. Or whatever it is. And I, I believe I know what it is, a perfect church in New York City. Amen. So we rejoice to be here, and we feel that it's been a blessing being here. Amen. And I feel that the revelation of that rock has gone out to the people already. Yes, and now this sits here as a memorial. The, this uh, pyramid is capped by the capstone itself representing the capstone so there, therefore with that there I feel that God's gonna give us in New York City a great uh, um, what should I say a revival a seventh a revival between August 7th here and may, maybe uh, November 20th and before we go to Penn Harris I like to see every predestinated seat of God sealed by the time we go to Penn Harris to go there for testimony and I believe that the signs and the ones will follow it. And I believe also that the uh, message that Brother Branham preached in 1963 in the month of November in Mark Auditorium, I always, the Lord spoke in my heart in the early part of this year when Brother Ken Annies called me and told me that uh, they, they were wanting to publish the New York series and they wanted to get pictures and information uh, related to Brother Branham's visit to, to New York City in 1963. And Brother Belomo assisted him as best as he could. And I just recently received a, um, a letter from Brother Floyd Patterson, spoken word, and they sent me a, a sample book of the messages coming out. And there, to my surprise, um, I've never seen this particular color, but the color of the spoken word book, the first one, we would see Jesus. I thought it was, would be appropriate. I thought it appropriate, we would see Jesus. And there, the color of it was red and red is the color of faith, and the seventh thunder of the blood. So therefore, I feel that as a memorial to the prophet and his message, we're going to play uh, these tapes, these uh, uh, cassette tapes, uh, uh, every Wednesday starting maybe in October, by the 20th of November, i like these tapes to be played in the church and give out the books and to sit there and to hear the word and the prophet could lean over the balance of time as it was and look down and see in New York City. Indeed, when he prophesied, now remember, there's something about New York City. He could look over the balance of time and see that something moving. See a people call out of all nations and so forth, and they're hearing his message. And then, actually, while they're hearing his message on Wednesday, his message is made manifest Sunday and throughout the whole week there the dynamics to his mechanics manifested. And that's what I'm looking for now. So I feel that the, the seventh seal has broke. Amen. And now I'm looking for the manifestation of the seventh seal. There was the mystery of the seventh seal for years. And then there was the breaking of the seventh seal. And now is the manifestation of the seventh seal, which is Jesus Christ, in you the hope of glory. So it's been good to have been here. Praise God. And uh, Brother Nino, or would you... Care to give a little testimony up here and what it means to you to be up here? Step over here, brother. Praise God. I'd just like to say that 
Bible history was made on mountains like this. Little simple things that God had told his servants to go up into the mountain or go by a lake or by a river, cross the river. And he told the children of Israel, he pointed to a mountain and to a land and told them that this would be their land. To me, this is a type of uh, a promised land because it only represents a type. But seeing here the capstone and knowing that this is the season that we live in, charity, I know charity is coming down. I know this is a sign of adoption and a sign of his sons uh, fixing to be adopted. And I believe that there has to be a first fruits of the adoption, and I believe it's coming forth now. I believe that we don't have to only believe it and say we hope that it's going to be, but we see the evidence of the land. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is in our midst. It's here <coughs> as, it, as we've been looking for it for many, many years. Uh, souls are being baptized with the Holy Spirit. We are in the land now, and we see the promise in front of us, and there's nothing but adopted sons to move forward and take the land with faith in their heart, and I feel privileged and honored to be here. To me, it's something special, and I feel I can never be the same, and I believe that we will witness Bible history taking place. Amen. God bless you, Brother Nino. Wonderful. Amen. And so, just to... Uh, or bring back something he said. The dynamics are here, and uh, and the witnesses, uh, brother Junior and brother Backus and uh, brother Joy Belomo and Joanne and other ones. I even understand that since we, uh, this time, uh, Sister Edith uh, Kenley received the Holy Ghost in Fort Wayne, and no doubt many other sisters. I believe our sister Ruth Smickle and another sister in Pennsylvania, Federici, and different ones. So I feel that Joanne's testimony was to set the sisters free to come forward and say that they have the Holy Ghost also. I believe that was the main thing of, of her testimony. So understand, friends, we are here. Amen. The hour has arrived. Amen. Amen. And therefore, different ones will be, begin to receive the Holy Ghost. The Philistines, when one receives the Holy Ghost, more Philistines move out. That's exactly what it means. And it's been very, very, very hard and brutal and rough trying to preach a perfection message and Philistines sitting in front of you but now I'm receiving help, amen. And one by one, we're driving out the Philistines. So therefore, understand now, the prophet's message as a memorial will be uh, played back in October and November and be finished by Penn Harris. And I believe by faith uh, what that message was supposed to bring, the dynamics, that that will go out at the same time. And there, we'll not only hear it by tape, we'll see it in demonstration and action for Paul said we, uh, the word didn't come in gasoline only, but it come in power and demonstration. And I believe that Brother Brown's message will be demonstrated. Brother Junior, say a couple of words. Praise God. God bless you. Well, I don't have much to say, but it, it's truly been a tremendous blessing to be up here in the mountain and to see the different places where the Lord has met his servant, Brother Coleman. And to me, it's a real privilege to be identified with this ministry. I have seen this uh, ministry been vindicated around the world and truly the Holy Spirit is here, has vindicated, has baptized people with the Holy Ghost. And I know one thing that I could never be the same. Amen. And when I come back to New York, um, I'm a different person. I've seen this, uh, We've. this is a time that we've waited for. This is a season that we've prayed for, the, the time that I believe all the apostles and the different ones in the Old Testament, the New Testament, has been waiting for this hour. And I believe that this ministry will call the resurrection. Amen. I believe that this ministry will bring the rapture. I believe that this ministry will bring every divine promise to pass. May the Lord bless you. Well, praise God. We certainly appreciate those words from my brother Junior. And something, as he spoke, I pull out this piece of paper here. And now I know why, because he, he said, he believed this ministry will bring a resurrection. And August 21st, 1970, Mount Tremblant, I wrote down a piece of paper here, two signs on Mount Tremblant, and I have the uh, both signs there, the little rock with the three peaks and this capstone here. And I wrote down there August 21st, 1970, two signs on Mount Tremblant, capstone, bride ministry, which was uh, the, the, those three peaks there. Seven seal, seven thunders, seven vials to the bride. Then I put for this here, capstone on the pyramid, capping the pyramid for the resurrection. 
exactly right there and did, did not know it. But yeah, I was getting ready to say it, but he said it first by inspiration. I want to come behind it and say it back. Amen. So, Brother Joseph, Palomo, can you kind of switch over there? And uh, you can shut the camera off, and we'll take a walk over here to the spot over here. Okay, this yellow thing light enough. Okay. Now we'd like to have our brother, uh, Joey Balomo, give a little testimony and what he feels uh, in his heart as God has brought him up here and how the Lord has blessed him to be here. Amen. just want to greet everyone and it's, say it's a tremendous privilege to be here today. As Brother Nino said, I believe we have seen history made. I believe the dynamics is here, the power is here to bring the people forward and to set everyone free. And that sealing angel has come down and we're going on to adoption. There is no doubt about it. And we've seen how the Lord prophetically has come down uh, months before to bust every spirit and everything that we have heard that is the mind of Christ and it has come down and you could put that same video on two months later and it's busting spirits right on time the way God wanted it. So I believe this is significant. I believe the authority is here. And as Brother Coleman said, when we try to come up the mountain, there was a seal, there was a gate up there saying that the power is already here. It's, you don't have to climb the mountain. The power is here. And you will be filled, you'll be sealed, and walk off that mountain in power. And that life will be living in you. And there's not a devil that could tell you anything else. There's no spirit that could tell you anything else. And that will take you on to perfection, maybe through trials. Yes, through trials and through testings. But brother, the anchor is here. And there's no doubt that we're going on to perfection. So God bless you. We'll see you back in New York. Appreciate you, Brother Joe. Well, we appreciate those remarks. And to me, think about this, the, the, the trail being sealed off, which was trail number eight. And I noticed uh, yesterday the trail uh, was changed to number 10. So therefore, uh, has the hour arrived that every revelation has been tasted by the ministry. And therefore, uh, it was climbing the mountain all these years. But now, to me, it'll be coming off the mountain will be the next uh, uh, a spiritual revelation to explode with fire in the New York Assembly Church. And so therefore, to conclude our little, um, uh, shall I say, visitation up on the mountain, our testimonies, uh, this is the rock here where I finished up and I came back that Monday in 1971 and the Lord had told me the previous Friday that I'd find the scar. So I went to the top, came all the way down, looked all around for a scarf on a windswept mountain over the weekend. So it'd be impossible to find a scarf. It'd blow away anywhere. But I came here to thank the Lord for the three years of 69, 70, 71. And I sat up right here on this mount, on this rock here. And I was sitting back. I'll demonstrate like this here. I was sitting back and thanking the Lord. Then I leaned back and I said, Lord, how I thank you for being here and for my wife and so forth. And I knew you told me that I'd find the scar. And I said, well, Lord, I still have to go down the rock, down the mountain. So somewhere down there, I believe I will find the scar. And I re reached back and I threw my head up like this and I was praising the Lord and I felt something in my left hand and there was the scar. So therefore, uh, I bring a little testimony back to you now. Uh, I believe all of us have found the scarf. And I believe that um, God has put a handful of barley in our scarves. And now uh, restoration indeed is here. So it's time for Ruth to be rewarded. Amen. And so therefore now I will restore, saith the Lord. I believe every seed of God in the New York Assembly shall be sealed. I believe that your family shall be set free. I believe those healings will begin to manifest because the Bible says uh, he that believe and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs shall follow the ones that are saved. Now the people are being genuinely saved by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the signs have got to follow. So therefore, may the Lord bless you to conclude this uh, portion of, the, of our um, uh, experience up here on uh, Mount Tremblant. And we'll take uh, some more um, tape at the foot of the mountain to show you where it's seal off and whatever else uh, the Holy Spirit would have us to show you. May the Lord richly bless you.
uh, bless you and pray for the brothers here for their trip back down the mountain. God bless you. <laughs> well, I'm just showing them the mountain there, okay? Already? Right. So, uh, brothers and sisters, um, we'd like to um, resume our testimony uh, about Mount Tremblant and Mount Moriah. And this portion here will conclude my testimony concerning Mount Tremblant. Now, I mentioned up on, up on the mountain that the bottom, the foot of the hill, this was trail number eight, and this trail was sealed off. And as Brother Joey will show you, it's completely sealed off. And so you can see now, this is the trail that uh, 1969, the Lord spoke to my heart and told me to go up this trail. It was trail number eight. I've not known what I would find up there. And, and that particular uh, spot up there where you've seen those rocks resembling the pyramid as a sign, two signs. And uh, I'll reiterate it again. The first sign was that capstone with three peaks on it, which to me was to the bride, a revelation. And then uh, when I came back in 1981, that rock was uh, was not there. So I wanted the brothers to see the rock, but it wasn't there. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, and said that uh, uh, they didn't have to see it because it was in them already, the revelation of it was. So, but then he said, you come back to the capstone up there, which I showed you. And I feel, therefore, that since the trail leading up there has been rough. In 1969 and 70 and 71, I had to go up in rain and mud, sometimes up to my ankles in mud, and go up there and sit there in rain and wait on the Lord and, and wait to get inspiration to bring it back to New York City. So it's been a rough, rugged, and hard. And so, therefore, um, in 1981, um, we climbed up again, but this time uh, I went up on the chairlift for the Holy Spirit just spoke in my heart and says, you, uh, you have already climbed the mountain and you're there now. And so therefore I feel at the capstone, that little slot on the pyramid, all of us have climbed up from uh, faith all the way up to that little slot and the bride, the whole bride, not just the ministers, are all in that Holy Spirit slot, which is the cap on the pyramid, and I feel that's where all of us are now. And so the Mount Transfiguration experience, I feel each member of the bride, the seven thunders is in seed form in the bride, and as each one is sealed, they will manifest that capstone of seven living spirits, which is the capstone manifestation. So therefore, it'll be uh, not trying to climb up there, because we have climbed up the last 20 years getting up to that spot. But we're here now. So it'd be a matter of um, the thunder's already in us. And as I told you up on the mountain, uh, letting Christ come from your heart out into the, to the area of your human spirits and live this message, thundering out in sweetness and humility, seven living voices. Then the cap that you've seen up there will come back around again and seal every bride member away in adoption and placing. So therefore, as you see this here, it's sealed, the trail is sealed away, is hidden, and is only revealed to the bride. And she will be at the top in the capstone, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So I feel that the hour has arrived now for one by one to begin to come off the mountain with the life and the spirit and the signs and the wonders of Jesus Christ. So we certainly want to conclude here now to say that how we thank God for, for the people of New York to have received this revelation and not knowing and receiving it by faith. And so I trust and pray that God has uh, uh, blessed your faith and your understanding and to believe and to receive a servant in the name of, of a to, to receive a righteous man rather in the name of a righteous man. And I appreciate our brother Nino here and brother Joey and brother Junior and our young brothers here and our wives that came up. And by the way, because uh, all of our wives, we had a chance to go to the spot yesterday. So we were blessed that, that they had a chance to see it and experience being there. So New York City, we 
I'll see you again, and so may the Lord richly bless you, and may uh, what has been spoken here and testified, may you not think it is a man trying to take something to himself or trying to imitate or impersonate the prophet, but uh, there's no way possible to find these things, and if it's there, then it would be God doing it, it's not just for me, it's for all the people for the bride. And so I know that each member of themselves will begin to experience the a perfect Holy Spirit works of Jesus Christ, which I've even heard testimonies already in the assembly, God talking to the little children and different people and revealing things to them. And that's the season that we have arrived at now. The seal of the angel is here, the inkhorn rider, to seal you up with the capstone ministry up on the top. So we're already there. So therefore, only thing we can do now is to thank God for it. Amen. And to praise him and to bless his name and get ready for the resurrection. Amen.